Hey, that's what's up. Hey, welcome to the Blessing Report with Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy. And today I have a really good topic because it's very fun to, fundamental to the Christian walk, and it is how to read your Bible. And I know it seems like a really easy topic. You read your Bible with your eyes, but no, I'm talking about um, a whole lot of stuff and just our approach to the Bible because we as a just a Christian group and just a culture it's become very flawed and tainted and this um, just our attitudes just need to get back on track so I'm gonna break this in a few groups um, the different groups are um, first group people who are new to the faith or people who have never read their Bible before and then um, the second group are people who have been in the faith a while and you're you're kind of stale in the faith so first group I want to talk about um, reading the Bible and the fact that your part um, your prayer life and your Bible life um, go hand in hand the one shouldn't ever equal out the other because um, how you receive the Bible and how you receive from the Holy Spirit is very dependent on your prayer life so if you're just reading to read you'll get your own interpretations you'll get your own understanding if the Holy Spirit is not giving you wisdom not giving you discernment and then you'll distort truth so as you're reading um, you have to make sure your prayer life is going hand in hand because we we see like throughout history people distort the Bible to do bad things like the Holocaust the um, trail of tears in the United States like people can use the goodness in the Bible is to do bad stuff. So make sure that you're not one of those people using it to justify yourself or your means. Make sure the Holy Spirit is revealing to you. And just, so that's how your approach should be in the Bible. You, you pray first, ask to receive, and then you study. And the second reason why um, we pray before we um, study the Bible is because we must set the um, atmosphere to invite the Holy Spirit in like literally you might have some things and like some demons some spirits or some generational curses around you in your environment and you need those things to be done away with and to do so you have to invite the Holy Spirit in and if you've been in the faith a while we we call it like setting the atmosphere and um you have to make sure like these things are gotten rid of. And a verse to help you with that is Ephesians 6, 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the dark world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So when you're not feeling up to um, read the Bible or pray, it's not just a fleshly thing that you're dealing with or a tiredness. You're also dealing with certain attacks that you are experiencing spiritually so you have to be prepared with that so setting the atmosphere with the holy spirit if you're praying and if you're worshiping the holy spirit will give you the energy give you the want and desire to study the bible and then those spirits are forced to leave and um a great way to set the atmosphere is um Re uh, not reading. A great way um, to set the atmosphere while you're Bible studying is um, music and singing and worshiping. And it says this in Psalms 23, uh, Psalms 22, verse 3, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. So um, in certain translations that says, The Lord abides in the praises of his people. So when you're trying to um, get in the mood and set the atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to come, Certain things have to leave off of you because of the purity and the wholeness and the awesomeness of God. Um, the verse, there's also verses that say God is a consuming fire. Like at the name of um, Jesus, these demons must flee. Like the presence of the Lord will saturate your heart, saturate the atmosphere, and then certain things must leave off of you. And then those generational curses are gone. Those demons, those devils, those um, spirits are off of you. And then you can begin to pray and study your Bible and then um, just be in worship with him. So um, with me, um, I, I do a song when I'm not in the mood to read my Bible, but also 
do what you have to do to get ready. If it takes you one song and you're in the mood uh, to pray and stuff, that's cool. But if it takes you like three or ten, like whatever it takes, like do it. And uh, just from me personally, like I could feel like a weight lifted after I begin praising and worshiping God. Like whatever like rebellious spirit or any doubt I have in my head, like it just leaves for me. Like the more and more worship, like you have to do get into it like set the atmosphere all right so um back to the different groups i want to uh, talk about earlier if um you're new in the faith and um you're just reading the bible for the first time so that's the first group um just where to start so um when it comes to reading the bible we have to have this understanding the bible is universal but people aren't so what this means is the Bible can be applied to any person anywhere they're at, but the way people learn and receive from the Bible is different. So some people cannot read the Bible firsthand uh, front to back. Like they will not make it, you'll, be just, you'll become discouraged or there's like dead parts of the Bible. When I was reading it, I read it front to back. It is dead boring. Like the book of Numbers is um, basically a roll call. Like he begot them and begot and just it's literally like numbers so some people can't make it that way so the way that you need to approach the bible um it's just the same way that you approach studying like you have to know what do you enjoy how do you learn best so, um to set up a starting point on how to start and approach the bible you have to first be committed and also be consistent when i started reading the bible i did um a book um a week and then i would just um clear out like my whole saturday or sunday and that's all i would do for the day so there's 66 books in the bible i finished in about 66 weeks and then um i would tell you like certain parts of the bible they were hard like i remember um i read psalms it was really long and to do in one day it took me 12 hours but i was like committed so your completion of reading the Bible is very determined about your desire. So it has to be a desire that you want to do this thing because no one's gonna force you to read the Bible. God is not gonna make you do this. You don't have to want to do this. And ask ask for that in prayer, a desire to know God, know him more closely. If you know yourself and you know like how you um, learn and how you read the Bible, if you're able to handle reading the Bible front to back, I personally would recommend that because um, people kind of like to discount the Old Testament, but the Old Testament provides a lot of context and a lot of culture to certain things. Like before I read the Bible, I didn't understand why we call Jesus the Lamb of God. But if you understand the practices of um, sacrificing sheep and lambs for the atonement of sin, it makes a lot of sense. And that's mainly in the Old Testament. And also the Old Testament points to Jesus as the Messiah. If you um, skip over a lot of that, you're missing out where um, this, like the fullness of God and fullness of the gospel is like coming to light for your hands. Like the whole Bible is just accounts of people's um, interactions with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and what he has done in his in their lives. So this is like a whole book of like testimonies. So um, if you're able to handle it, if you have that spiritual maturity, um, continue to read it um, front to the back. As you're reading the Bible, as you're continuing in the faith, your spiritually, uh, your spiritual maturity, commitment, and connection to the Holy Spirit will increase. So, a good analogy I always like to use with the Christian walk is working out. At first, it's very hard to work out, but as you begin to get deeper, get more in tune, become more strengthened, it becomes easier. So that goes also with your spiritual walk and studying the Bible. It becomes easier. You become stronger, and then. You'll begin to understand uh, more of the Bible as you're um, going along, but at first it will be uncomfortable. So you have to be prepared that it will be uncomfortable as you're studying. And um, be prepared. You're not gonna feel like reading the Bible sometimes and you won't feel like praying. Like I don't always feel like praying, but we don't let our feelings dictate our, um, our duties and our obligations. Like. This is something you need to do to better yourself and to be a better um, Christian. And you just need to be consistent and ask for that in prayer. Consistency is very key. So the first group, um, the second part that you need to remember is how are you reading the Bible? So 
there are certain ways to um, approach it. Well, um, I've been talking to a lot of people and a lot of people say that either you should start from the beginning or the best break in the Bible is the Old and New Testament. So either start with the Old Testament or start with the New Testament and you should continue with the New Testament if you're going that route. So start with the Gospels and go all the way to um, Revelations, but then double back. Like every Christian should, should be able to say that they have read the Bible and the completion of it. Because the Bible in the whole, it just says like who you are in Christ and what you believe. So if you have even read um, the Bible, how do you know that you agree with everything? How do you know you support this claim that you are a Christian and you know what you're supposed to do and what you're called to be as a Christian. So that's why we all should read the Bible because you need to know at least the minimum of what you think and what you believe and why you believe that way. So the next group, um, people who have been in the faith a while and um, kind of, you're kind of, I guess stale, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Uh, we need to address certain attitudes and certain things when it comes to church culture and how we address the Bible. And um, Christians, we need to stop um, dismiss, uh, we, all right. So as Christians, we need to stop allowing people to diminish, um, devalue and discount the Bible. Um, you'll always hear people say that the Bible was written by man. All right. And what they're alluding to is that it has to have flaws. There has to be inconsistencies, but we need to understand that the Bible wasn't written by men. Christians should never believe that the Bible was written by men. The Bible was written with men, but not by men. And the verse that goes with that is 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable uh, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So in the original language, the word inspiration means God breathed. That means the Holy Spirit came into these people and guided them and guided the word. And also we have the scripture that Jesus is the word. So for people to say that the Bible is written by men is just flawed. So don't let people discount or discredit the Bible when they haven't even done the research. Like God breathed, like his spirit was upon the words as they were being written. And also, the same spirit that was with the scribes when they were writing it is the same spirit that stops alterations to get in place. If you um, did like, this is, isn't in the Bible, but if you did like cultural um, research on um, the Pharisees, the Pharisees were the scribes, the Sadducees were the priests. Um, the Pharisees would have countless hours of prayer before they would even make a comma when it came to any punctuation just to make sure that they were on the same page. And it wasn't just a few chosen men. They were groups of these guys together. If they all didn't agree, they wouldn't even make a move. So that type of precision, that type of guidance from the Holy Spirit, guidance from God, don't let people discount what God has ordained and put in place. So um, just remember people People will speak as if they have wisdom. Like people are very confident in thinking that it has to have flaws. These people didn't even do the research, bro. Like they didn't even look this stuff up. They ain't got the answers, Sway. They ain't got the answers. <laughs> so um, don't let people um, do that. And also um, another reason why you shouldn't let people um, discount the Bible. We have a lot of the original manuscripts. So these people that are discounting the Bible, they'll never fact check with the, the original sources. Like we have the um, Dead Sea Scrolls, we have like a lot of stuff that you can check, but they're not gonna study Greek and Hebrew and um, Arabic to fact check, are they? Nope, they're just gonna say, nope, it was written by men, but they a lie, they a dead lie. So um, that is with that. And another thing um, we need to start doing um, as a faith, it sounds ironic, but Christians, we need to start reading the Bible. Um, we have these people calling themselves Christians and um, they haven't re finished reading the Bible. But when um, you do research, like more research, more research. Uh, Christian literally means uh, follower of Christ, but also means little Christ. So there's um, scriptures that we are ambassadors um, in Christ. So what a an ambassador does there's supposed to be a representation um, to be, or 
they're supposed to come in the stead of a diplomat or a country to represent them. So, like a lot of people say, there's like this saying, like you might be the only Jesus someone knows. So, if people have like questions and you're not reading your Bible, you're just going to either you're not going to have the answer, or you're going to give them an answer based on your limited understanding of the Bible, your hearsay, or you'll just make it up and then you'll have some type of human error. So we we have to we have to take it more seriously the responsibility of calling ourselves a Christian, not also just in name and label, but also being a Christian and walk and. So yeah, that's a main reason why it's very important um, for us to read the Bible because as you're studying and as you're continuing and you're walking your faith, you're um, called to witness and you're going to be responsible for guiding people. So you need to read the Bible because the verse, it says, um, study to show yourself approved. So the problem with the fact that Christians don't know how to read the Bible is the fact that we still continue to try to guide people in spite of that. So you always hear this, like someone has a problem, you'll be like, oh, pray on it, read your Bible. If I'm outside the faith, I shouldn't be reading numbers if I'm having girl problems. I shouldn't be reading, let's see, revelations if I'm trying to figure out who is Jesus. Like just to guide people, you have to be ready, like you're, your ability to guide people will um, be determined on your own personal study. So as you're reading, you're going to understand like certain books are better for guiding people in certain situations. If someone's having trouble um, understanding, I guess, people, interactions, I know like personally, the book of Proverbs is very good for that. If people are very depressed, I will give them Psalms because David was having hardship. If um, people don't like like a lot of fluff. They just wanna know who Jesus is. They just wanna know why he's important. I wouldn't give them Matthew or John. The shortest book that gets straight to the point is the book of Mark. So that's why we as Christians need to be able to guide people because as we're reading ourselves, we'll be able to guide others. So the last point um, I'm gonna make, um, Christians, we have to stop treating the Bible as basically like a genie because like, you know, I don't know. God works a lot of ways. He, he can do a lot of things, but a lot of people do this like, God, give me a word. Wherever I stop, here it goes. Okay. The word which came upon Jeremiah from the Lord when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, I'm in the book of Jeremiah. I have no context. I have no, I have nothing to ground myself on. So Christians, we have to, we have to be more direct and we have to be more disciplined in our Bible study. So if you're um, going about your approach when reading the Bible, be consistent, um, read at least a chapter in the morning and a chapter at night, but be open to switching up a few times. Um, I was in the book of Romans and God was telling me, you need to read um, about Elijah and Elijah right now. And then I just didn't. And then um, what happened was, uh, this is with my uh, with my dry season. I, I was spiritually dead to like Romans. Romans is a really good book. And I was just not receiving from it because I was being disobedient. So. Um, as long as um, you're being led by the Holy Spirit, as long as you're being led by Jesus, um, be okay with switching up. And um, thank you for watching my video. This is the Blessing Report with um, Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy. And um, please subscribe and hit the like button. That's the only way I get credit for any of these videos. And you keep updated. And um, also leave a comment in the description box below. I'm. Um, doing a lot of stuff and I want everyone to be informed and I also like hearing back um, hearing feedback and how you're feeling and how you um, are doing I'm I'm invested in y'all brothers sisters in Christ uh, remember I love you only because Jesus loves me and he loves you too <laughs> and remember Jesus blesses people by using people to bless people so how have you been a blessing today thanks for watching
I stand before the people underneath the steeple. Kinda thinking twice, like I'm repeating sequels. 